Hey there, thanks for tuning in to Meditating the Word. I'm really glad you're here with us on this year-long trip through the Bible. Want a guide to what we've read and what's coming up? Just get the reading plan from blueletterbible.com. Click the link in our show notes. I'll be reading from the World English Bible, but you can use any Bible you like. If you haven't hit subscribe on our podcast, why not do it now? Click subscribe so you won't miss any episodes. This is day 167. Today, we're reading 1 Kings 9 and 2 Chronicles 8. The First Book of Kings, Chapter 9 When Solomon had finished the building of the Lord's house, the king's house, and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do. The Lord appeared to Solomon the second time, as he had appeared to him at Gibeon. The Lord said to him, I have heard your prayer and your supplication that you have made before me. I have made this house holy, which you have built, to put my name there forever, and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. As for you, if you will walk before me as David your father walked, in integrity of heart and in uprightness, to do according to all that I have commanded you, and will keep my statutes and my ordinances, then I will establish the throne of your kingdom over Israel forever, as I promised to David your father, saying, There shall not fail from you a man on the throne of Israel, but if you turn away from following me, you or your children, and do not keep my commandments and my statutes which I have set before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them, then I will cut off Israel out of the land which I have given them, and I will cast this house which I have made holy for my name, out of my sight. And Israel will be a proverb and a byword among all peoples. Though this house is so high, yet everyone who passes by it will be astonished and hiss, and they will say, Why has the Lord done this to this land and to this house? And they will answer, Because they abandoned the Lord their God, who brought their fathers out of the land of Egypt and embraced other gods and worshipped them and served them. Therefore, the Lord has brought all this evil on them. At the end of twenty years in which Solomon had built the two houses, the Lord's house and the king's house, now Hiram, the king of Tyre, had furnished Solomon with cedar trees and cypress trees and with gold according to all his desire. King Solomon gave Hiram twenty cities in the land of Galilee. Hiram came out of Tyre to see the cities which Solomon had given him, and they didn't please him. He said, What cities are these which you have given me, my brother? He called them the land of Kabul to this day. Hiram sent to the king, 120 talents of gold. This is the reason of the forced labor which King Solomon conscripted to build the Lord's house, his own house, Milo, Jerusalem's wall, Hazor, Megiddo, and Gezer. Pharaoh, king of Egypt, had gone up, taken Gezer, burned it with fire, killed the Canaanites who lived in the city, and given it for a wedding gift to his daughter Solomon's wife. Solomon built in the land of Gezer, Beth Haran, the lower, Baalath, Tamar in the wilderness. All the storage cities that Solomon had, the cities for his chariots, the cities for his horsemen, and that which Solomon desired to build for his pleasure in Jerusalem, and in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion. As for all the people who were left of the Amorites, the Hittites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, who were not of the children of Israel, 
their children who were left after them in the land, whom the children of Israel were not able to utterly destroy, of them Solomon raised a levy of bond servants to this day. But of the children of Israel, Solomon made no bond servants, but they were the men of war, his servants, his princes, his captains, and rulers of his chariots and of his horsemen. These were the 550 chief officers who were over Solomon's work, who ruled over the people who labored in the work. But Pharaoh's daughter came up out of David's city to her house, which Solomon had built for her. Then he built Milo. Solomon offered burnt offerings and peace offerings on the altar which he built to the Lord three times per year, burning incense with them on the altar that was before the Lord. So he finished the house. King Solomon made a fleet of ships in Azion Geber, which is beside Eloth, on the shore of the Red Sea in the land of Edom. Hiram sent in the fleet his servants, sailors who had knowledge of the sea, with the servants of Solomon. They came to Ophir and fetched from their gold four hundred and twenty talents and brought it to King Solomon. The Second Book of Chronicles, Chapter 8 At the end of twenty years in which Solomon had built the Lord's house and his own house, Solomon built the cities which Huram had given to Solomon and caused the children of Israel to dwell there. Solomon went to Hamath Zobah and prevailed against it. He built Tadmor in the wilderness and all the storage cities which he built in Hamath. Also he built Beth Horam the upper and Beth Horam the lower, fortified cities with walls, gates, and bars and Baalath, and all the storage cities that Solomon had, and all the cities for his chariots, the cities for his horsemen, and all that Solomon desired to build for his pleasure in Jerusalem, in Lebanon, and in all the land of his dominion. As for all the people who were left, of the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, who were not of Israel, of their children who were left after them in the land, whom the children of Israel didn't consume, of them Solomon conscripted forced labor to this day. But of the children of Israel, Solomon made no servants for his work, but they were men of war, chief of his captains, and rulers of his chariots and of his horsemen. These were the chief officers of King Solomon even 250 who ruled over the people. Solomon brought up Pharaoh's daughter out of David's city to the house that he had built for her. For he said, My wife shall not dwell in the house of David, king of Israel, because the places where the Lord's ark has come are holy. Then Solomon offered burnt offerings to the Lord on the Lord's altar which he had built before the porch even as the duty of every day required, offering according to the commandment of Moses on the Sabbath, on the new moons, and on the set feasts, three times per year, during the Feast of Unleavened Bread, during the Feast of Weeks, and during the Feast of Booths. He appointed, according to the ordinance of David his father, the divisions of the priests to their service, and the Levites to their offices, to praise and to minister before the priests, as the duty of every day required, the doorkeepers also by their divisions at every gate. For David, the man of God, had so commanded. They didn't depart from the commandment of the king to the priests and the Levites concerning any matter or concerning the treasures. Now all the work of Solomon was accomplished. From the day of the foundation of the Lord's house until it was finished. So the Lord's house was completed. Then Solomon went to Azion Geber and to Eloth and on the seashore in the land of Edom. Huram sent him ships and servants 
who had knowledge of the sea by the hands of his servants. And they came with the servants of Solomon to Ophir, and brought from there four hundred fifty talents of gold, and brought them to King Solomon. Father God, it's interesting that Solomon wouldn't allow his wife, the daughter of Pharaoh, to live in the presence of the Ark of the Covenant because it was holy. He built her a house away from David's house and from the temple. It makes me realize what a mistake it is to try to compartmentalize our lives into spiritual and secular categories. We aren't called to be Christian on certain days or at certain times or in certain places, but every place and all the time. Help us, Father, to recognize when we try to make allowances for the things of this world and to instead live our lives wholly dedicated to you. Amen. You can catch Meditating the Word on any podcast platform you like, YouTube, or even Facebook. If you are listening from one of the podcast platforms, we've got links in the notes to help you find us everywhere else. My mission? To inspire folks to deepen their Christian faith by reading God's Word every day. You can pitch in to share this podcast, rate it, review it, every bit helps. Hey, thank you for being part of this Bible journey with me. Please know that I'm praying for you. Let's all pray for each other. I can't wait to see you tomorrow. Until next time, be blessed and be a blessing.